The Ryan and Rush Show is brought to you by Vision Homes. If you're looking to build a home in North Central West Virginia, visit askvisionhomes.com. Vision Homes, building you a house you're proud to call home. And don't forget to subscribe to The Ryan and Rush Show, but don't take our word for it. Take Coach Neelan's. Hi, this is Coach Don Neelan, and you're watching The Ryan and Rush Show. Please subscribe. <laughs> And we welcome you into another edition of the Ryan and Russ Show, your source for West Virginia sports. All right, Ryan, here we go. We're at the intersection of football and basketball. Ready or not, here comes basketball season. Of course, a lot more chaos going on in this program. We thought we had, you know, after Jose Perez, we kind of hit the end of it. Uh, but the gift that keeps on giving in, in madness, and uh, I'm sure Josh Eilert has his hands full to start his head coaching career, of course. Um, let's take it back to the George Mason game. Uh, Friday night, obviously a scrimmage. Obviously, you try different things out. Um, I think the biggest concern from that game, of course, is a cook, a cook going down. Um, very unfortunate scene, uh, of yeah. course. I mean, hey, good for the team to to finish out the game. I was actually surprised that they finished this out, especially after we saw like last year on Monday Night Football with Demar Hamlin and everything you know related to that, and them canceling the game, an NFL game. Never mind a college basketball scrimmage. But hey, they 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 prevailed. They ended up finding out a way to win. Which, which is a good sign for this team. But, um, of course, we're not going to speak on a cook a cook a lot. We're glad he's stable. We're glad he's all right. We're going to miss him, of course. We hope he can return to basketball. But, obviously, his concern right now is his health and making sure he's good for, for the game of life instead of the game of basketball, as we talked about. But, Ryan, kind of talking about this scrimmage, what are your, some, some of your notes right off the bat as we start to head into the season as Missouri State comes to Morgantown on Monday? Yeah, that, that, that was a good game for this team in terms of a tight game where you trailed and there was adversity on the floor and then unfortunately off the floor. So more adversity for this team. Uh, George Mason, th that was going to be a hard team to prepare for because Tony Skin was in his first year, just like Josh Eilert, Tony Skin coming over from Maryland. I think they were a little thrown off that they went 2-2-1, and I thought that bothered us in the first half with their pressure. So it's hard to gauge when, when you get a new staff and, and teams are running into this when they try to prepare for us. But I thought they made some good adjustments at the half. And the main thing was getting Jesse Edwards back on the floor. Mm -hmm. they got to find a way to keep him out of foul trouble because it's night and day difference of protecting the rim and then just being able to score inside um, and get to the free throw line and put pressure on that defense when he's on the floor versus off the floor. Well, I don't think we have to do our X factor question again uh, this year. Yeah. Like last year, a lot of people may remember we when we would do previews for these teams and who we would go against. We'd do who's the X factor for the Mountaineers. And after about the fourth or fifth time, you say Eric Stevenson. It's like, all right, let's just eliminate this question. Well, I think we found this year's in Jesse Edwards and staying out of foul trouble. But I'll tell you what is he looked tremendous out there. Obviously, there's going to be concerns on defense and we'll, we'll not just obviously with Jesse, but this, this team as a whole, especially as we're dwindling and it seems like we're losing a player every day and we'll get to the defense here in a second. Um, but yeah, Jesse Edwards looked incredible out there. The announcers even said this, I was a little thrown off by such a big guy wearing number seven. It's like yeah. college football and NFL changing all their numbers. Well, we're seeing it here in basketball too. So <clears throat> something to get used to as well. I also want to talk about Quinn Selinski. I mean, he had, a fantastic game. He was definitely uh, making the shots that a lot of those shots we weren't making last year as a team uh, finished with 26 uh, minutes, went uh, five for 12 um, ended up. Let's see. He went, what was it? Yeah. Three from four from three point. And we're going to need that, especially uh, with concerns on the defensive front. And you talked about this and I know you'll talk about it more coming up here, Ryan, with us probably having to go to zone, which Jesse Edwards of course played in Syracuse. So uh, definitely, something we can figure out there. Uh, but we're in a position where we had this hugs era and we're going to have to grind out teams, beat them on defense, have that defensive stop. And now we're transitioning to the Eiler era. And maybe this isn't the way he intended it, of course, but now we're going to have to outscore teams and uh, be dominant with our shots and make our three pointers and, and make that extra pass and really be smart on the offensive end because if we're not, it could obviously come back to bite us on the defensive end. It's kind of funny because it's a mirror of how our football team is right now as well. Yeah. It's, I mean, we entered the night uh, with 10 scholarship guys, and now we're down to basically eight that, that are active. So like you said, 
it's not ideal that we're going to have to play zone, but it's the reality. I mean, you get, you only got eight guys that are on scholarship. Obviously you have to walk on as well. That gets you to nine, but you only get so many fouls. So you got to get creative and find a way to patch this game together defensively. It, it was no secret. They were really bad in the first half. And Josh said that at the, at the halftime interview, um, but I mean that that's expected when you got a bunch of transfers as well. It's going to take time to mesh in the system, but I I don't see how this team doesn't play zone. It, whether it's point drop, which is a matchup zone, two three, maybe they throw a little bit of that one three one. Deshaun and Alex Ruoff, obviously with their history of playing in the one three one, and Josh being a part of the staff as well. So I think it's going to be maybe they do a little bit of one two two pressure back into a zone where kind of that more. We're going to press you, but not press you to steal the ball, turn you over, but more make you run seven, eight seconds off the shot clock. And then Mm -hmm. next thing you know, that shot clock, you're calling your play and there's what, 15, 16 seconds on the shot clock and shorten these games up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just like the football team run the ball, right? The equivalent of running the ball in in basketball. Um, Yeah. Right. So we're in, we're in an interesting position because of course, after this game, actually, let me, let me make one more point about the scrimmage real quick. I think there's this sometimes as fans, right? We, we worry that maybe if a scrimmage doesn't go well, especially when you're supposed to beat a team that, uh Oh, we're, we're screwed for the season. And I actually have an example to bring this up. It's like that Penn state scrimmage, right? When we came into the season and we were supposed to supposed to have a really good team, we lost that Penn state scrimmage and it kind of was, a downhill season. What was that? 2018. Yeah. It was the year before I came back. Yeah. It that's was the right. Year right. Right after JC and uh, Dak. So that, yeah. that, yeah. Yep. So we, we have kind of that. Oh no, but this situation is nowhere near that situation. One. Yeah. This is a whole new coach. This is a new team. This is a new coaching staff. They got to figure out what they have. And I think of course, when you have a scrimmage, you got to use that to your advantage. You got to experiment. You got to try different things. And we saw that. And it's actually, I take it. It's kind of good to get burnt in a scrimmage. It's kind of good to get burnt in a preseason football game as you figure out where your weaknesses lie. But I think the big thing that we can take away from this, and as we've done our interview series this week with the assistant coaches and maybe someone special on Friday as well, mm-hmm. is a common theme that we keep talking about. It's the adversity of this team. And there's something about just going through so much adversity and then getting to the basketball part of the season, it's like now there's just left to play basketball. This is the easiest part where a lot of teams, yeah. the hardest part is to play basketball. So there's definitely an advantage there. And I think with a cook, a cook going down, um, Jesse Edwards fouling out, uh, just still a level of uncertainty entering this George Mason game of, you know, who else is going to step up? Who are we going to depend on? What are the roles of these players to come back and win that game? That that's a lot bigger than i think people realize yeah it's 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 great and it's a virtue that we've talked about and there's going to be plenty more um obviously everybody has seen the news with with kerr that we'll get to here in a minute and uh, and the cook i mean it's it's it definitely they have not been able to catch a break at raekwon battle i mean we it feels like the light years ago that the raekwon battle thing was going on and it was only a week ago when that decision came down so yeah i mean And you look at, I mean, Louisville lost last night. I know Louisville's not very good, but there's been multiple – Kentucky struggled the other night. There's been multiple programs that struggle in these exhibition games. It's it's a preseason game. Mm -hmm. And and in this instance, with Josh and his staff, they're trying to find out what they got. Um, Obviously, they're still going to be trying to find out what they got with the different pieces moving around. But, I mean, to beat an A-10 program, I mean, it's not like they played – a bottom feeder mid-major. I mean, George Mason is a top tier mid-major program. They've been to a final four before um, during the Jim Laranega days. And, they, and that's why they were able to go from the CAA to the uh, Atlantic 10. And that's why I, w- I was pleased with the effort in the second half, but the common denominator was keeping Jesse Edwards on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have a feeling that'll be a common denominator. all yeah. game. <clears throat> and of course we talk about this too, especially in March madness. But when you also have a scrimmage like this and you got a mid-major like George Mason coming in is they they have a little extra chip on their shoulder. They have a little more that they want to prove that whereas a power five like us is like, we're just kind of trying to figure out the pieces. So there's definitely more of that motivational factor as well. But, you know, hats off to to this team and, and, and winning the scrimmage. I know in the long run, it doesn't really mean anything, but I think there's something to moral victories, especially with everything going on. And speaking of everything going on, obviously, Happy Halloween. It was announced uh, 
I, I guess it was yesterday, wasn't it on Halloween, Ryan, that yeah. Kerr uh, will be suspended the first nine games. And here's what I have to say about this. I don't really see in the NCAA with how great and fair this that nonprofit organization is uh, that a suspension follows a player and it's not with the team. I, I'm very confused by this, Ryan. Uh, maybe it's happened before. I'm sure it has somewhere, but it just, we keep getting back to the, how does Kansas keep getting away with this stuff? I mean, I, I don't want to go down that road. It's just a thought you have when you're thinking about this, but we're in the NIL era. And now we're our team, like our point guard is now in trouble for getting impermissible benefits. Like, what are we doing here? We just yeah. lost Raekwon. Obviously, a cook a cook went down, and maybe with this going on, and 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 Patrick Morrissey and Jim Justice and our government leaders getting involved in this, actually, maybe we can get Raycon because that's that's really what we need right now, obviously. But nonetheless, till that actually happens, um, I, I guess Josh said we they submitted the appeal yesterday, and we'll we'll know within two weeks about Raekwon. But dude, we're we're without our starting point guard for nine games, and you know, yeah, it's it's at least it's the nine games and it's not in the big 12 season, but those include Pitt. That includes St. John's. That includes the the tournament down in, in Florida games that Josh really is counting on winning and needs to win, especially before the big 12 gauntlet so that he has a chance to be the head coach of this team. Yeah. It's more inconsistency picking and choosing who to penalize from, from that organization. That's a clown show. Uh, <laughs> It's, I mean, nothing ever happens to Arizona, never ever happens to Kansas. Or it, it's, if you're a blue blood, you're going to be fine. But if you're not a blue blood, you're, you're going to get dinged. That's kind of just been the reality. Just ask Oklahoma State, who was completely jobbed uh, during yeah. these final final five years. And they waited till after Cade Cunningham was gone so that they could make sure he played in the NCAA tournament because he was the number one pick. It, their, their agenda is pretty clear, and it's been pretty clear that they're going to take care of their, uh, they're blue bloods. That, that, mm -hmm. That's what they've done from the beginning. And they're, they're going to hammer everybody else to make an example out of them. And unfortunately we fit in that category that they want to make an example out of. But I mean, you mentioned it, Rush. We're down three starters now. Uh, our two, our two guys in the backcourt, Kerr and, and, and battle. And then uh, obviously with the situation with the cook going back to Friday night, I mean, guys like Ofri that, that yeah. I thought really, I was really impressed with the way he was able to, come in and provide some athleticism right off the bat um, and, and playing hard. He, he's going to play 25, 30 minutes now. Uh, Quince, Quince Lezinski, I mean, he played yeah. 25 minutes. They both did off the bench, really provide a spark there in the second half. That thing, 25, is going to go to 30 minutes. So, And then, obviously, our guys, Kobe and Seth, are going to be leaned on heavily, Josiah Harris. So it is next man up, but it, it's, it's really frustrating – when and I hate using the injury excuse uh, in football when, whenever you lose games, but this is completely different because this is being taken from you. Injuries happen in sports. This is just nonsense from an organization that has a clear agenda that has put that has taken away our, our starting backcourt uh, for for the foreseeable future. I mean, at best case, as of right now, we get Kerr back. I think for Radford. And then Raekwon doesn't play the whole year. Now, hopefully, we get something overturned here and we get Raekwon battle back for probably the Florida trip is what is ideally going to happen. Like what happened with Gabe Osaboyan um, when we went down to Cancun. That thing got – we won the appeal uh, two weeks after and then we got him back. But, I mean, this it's beyond frustrating that, that, that we're down three starters and only one of them was an injury. It, the other ones are just the NCAA having their own clear agenda. I, I have a great appeal for the NCAA. It's you ask the question, do you want to make money? <laughs> yeah. When hey, West Virginia being a great program makes the NCAA money. I mean, we're a top 20 program. Like I know we're not a blue blood and I'm not even saying that we're necessarily right outside that blue blood line, but that next tier of a competitive team that can just come at you at any time. That is, that is good for college basketball. And especially with everything going on, Come on, NCAA, like get it together. But what's the uh, the irony in all of this, right? When we go talking about transfer portal madness, and I guess we still don't know our final roster, but on round two or three, whatever, is it looked like Kobe and Seth were were probably going to transfer out. I think a lot of us assumed they would to get playing time somewhere else, which no one would have blamed them, but they stayed around. They felt like their heart was in it. 
And now they're going to be the starters to lead the season. Starting backcourt. Yeah. It, it, it shows you that just being persistent and, and doing what you believe is right and putting in the hard work and doing it the, the right way, quote, gets you far in life. That, that sometimes just working hard will put you in a position to, to do great things. So good for Kobe, good for Seth. We're really going to need him, really going to lean into him. But, hey, we got experienced guys that have been on this team for a while. Josiah, of course, too, and Pat. Is those, those four are really going to need to provide some type of foundation for this team, some type of stability. So they definitely have their work cut out for them. But, hey, I'm – I'm all for it. I love Kobe. I love Seth. They they stepped up big last year in some games. So now it's their turn to kind of be step up more more times and be the more dominant duo or trio. How many guys are out there? But especially from the Kobe and Seth standpoint, is hey, this is this is why you stayed. So now now it's your yeah. time to prove it. Um, I have a question for you, Ryan. And this is actually is something we haven't talked about because usually before our shows and stuff, we go over a little bit of a script. At least stay on cue, right? So. What is, and I don't, I just don't fully know this. What is the deal with Ali? Is he eligible to play? Is he just extra depth on the team? I know I don't think he got out for the scrimmage. Um, he he's eligible to, to my okay. knowledge, but I I think that they he's he's more just a practice body. But I understand. I think that they're gonna have to play him. Well, that's what I'm. He's, I guess that's yeah, what I'm getting at. Is I mean yeah. he. I mean we're talking about defense. I mean at least the guy has size. I will say that about the scrimmage too. Is Obviously, a cook going down really hurt. We'll, we'll figure that. But hey, it's nice to see some size on the floor. We got some big bodies out there, Ryan. So it's especially with with Jesse and and, and Quinn. And, you know, maybe Holly has to show up for a couple minutes to to relieve Jesse of of you know avoiding foul That's trouble. Right. So we'll, we'll see how they go. Yeah, Pat. Pat was out yeah. there as well. I, I really like Pat coming in, filling in some time too. He's a great great depth piece as well and hopefully he keeps playing his way up as he did last year to get more minutes that means good things are happening uh but this team definitely has their work cut out for them ryan um as we talked about we interviewed all the assistants uh we jordan mccabe was out earlier Deshaun butler will be tomorrow thursday and uh, i wonder who could be friday ryan we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out yep but a couple notes for everyone our first game is missouri state and this is, I'll let Ryan do a little, little early look ahead, but this Ryan game, this game, Ryan, isn't a, it's not going to, we already know the depth issues, but even without that, this game wasn't going to be a walk in the park. No, not at all. And I mean, Missouri State, Dana Ford's in his sixth season out of the Missouri Valley. They finished, they've been finishing in the top two or three. They, I think they finished fifth or sixth last year. So they, they bring back a good amount of their core this it's going to be a really hard game. This is uh, when the I know, I know that we like to talk about the line a little bit and kind of how that relates to what kind of game this can be. When this line comes out on Monday morning, Sunday night, and it's single digits, don't be surprised. This this is going to be a really good test, kind of like George Mason, and they're, they're going to have to grind this thing out. This isn't your typical play a team from the, the SWAC or MEAC and beat them by 30. This, mm-hmm. this is going to be a real game. Where these guys are going to get tested, and they're they're playing with house money. This is a buy game for them, so they're going to come in there swinging, hoping that they can pull the upset and and get a check and get a W. So we'll we'll preview that extensively on Monday. Dive into the actual matchups on our pregame show, but just a little background. This is a good program that's been a solid program the last five six years in the Missouri Valley, which is a great league. They got yeah. Drake, Bradley, Murray State, Belmont, all these mid-majors and basketball country that always produce teams that almost win NCAA tournament games. And Missouri State's been there year in and year out. And they, they've won a couple of bye games in the last couple of years too. Yeah, that's your former conference when you were at Austin. No, State, no, right? I was, oh, I was you're, Ohio. You're Ohio Valley, not Missouri. Yeah. That's right. I, and I, I Belmont the old... and Murray went Belmont from Ohio Murray's... to uh, Missouri That's last where year. I got confused. Yeah. That's right. I forgot yep. they made the transition because you said Belmont, Murray State. And I remember Austin P playing them. And then, yep. that's right, Ohio Valley. Ohio Valley. I don't think they have a team from Ohio in there. Uh, no. and, and something else, a quick note, want to bring up uh, as well about who are we talking? Who did Missouri State beat? They beat someone recently. It was Oklahoma State. That's right. They beat Oklahoma yeah. State. And yep. don't forget too, everyone is a message from these assistant coaches. that has been consistent um, this off season from Josh and Josh didn't necessarily use the term patience, but it's very re- similar to that is, you know, go out there, cheer this, 
team on. They've put in a lot of hard work. They've been through the ringer. We, it, it is our obligation. I'm going to even say obligation, not our job, but like our obligation as fans to get behind this team. If they have to grind it out against Missouri State, heck, I mean, TCU lost a bye game the first game of the season last year because they had a similar issues with guys being out. And I, yeah. it wasn't even this bad. And we saw how well TCU ended up doing last year and, and, and how, how highly they got ranked. A couple issues towards the end of the season, but that was more of a personnel thing than an actual basketball playing ability. So it will be okay. We're here to tell you it's going to be okay. It's going to be a work in progress. It's going to be grinded out. There's going to be situations where you're probably looking and you're like, what is going on right now? And that's all right. It's it's because of this just turmoil of the off season, because we're still trying to figure out a couple pieces. Like what is our actual final roster? Um, there's just going to, there's going to be some tough. There's probably gonna be some tough halves, some tough situations, even a couple of tough games in there. But I have no doubt, especially when we were going through these interviews, Ryan, and and talking to this team, that they're bought in and they're bought in together, and 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 we're looking forward to them to to them showing it. It may not be right off the bat. There's a lot they got to figure out, but yep. be patient with this team. And I think you know we get to the end of the non-con, especially the Big Twelve time, and 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 we'll see we'll see the fruits of their labor pay off. So. Ryan, it's it's the greatest time of year, as we said, the intersection of football and basketball, especially basketball. It's what it's our bread and butter here on the Ryan and Rush Show, especially Ryan's former employer being uh, Coach Huggins and and the basketball team. And uh, it's just it's a great fun sport to cover as well. So we're excited to see you all at the Coliseum. Always feel like you can say hi to us this year. We'll be at most of the games. And hey, let's let's go Mountaineers. It, it'll be it'll be a grinder of a season, but it's it's going to be a good one. Yes, sir. Let's go Mountaineers.